I'm going to be cooking my favorite joint of meat, which is a shoulder of pork. They've had the bone out of it and they've rolled it up and put this little netting thing on it to hold it in shape. But I like it because it's, it has more flavor. It is slightly sweeter. And this particular piece, as you can see, is a gorgeous red color because it's a free range version. And it's amazingly cheap over here. I'm paying about 10 euros for a kilo of quality sausages. Okay, just sausages. But this was two euros 70 for a kilo. In fact, I was thinking of doing a video chopping these up and mincing them and putting them into sausages and making my own sausages be so much cheaper. Anyhow, this is uh, my favorite cooking pot for the oven. I always like it. And I've got a very unusual ingredient here, which I've been soaking them. It's about a third of the pot. It wasn't completely full. And you can see they're seps. They are a locally grown, and they don't even grow them, they find them mushroom, and they're absolutely delicious. These were dried from little, believe it or not. Um, they add a, a yummy flavor. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. It's gorgeous. I've got a, a mixture here. Um, I'm not expecting to use all of it, but I chopped up some uh, apricots. I've chopped up fresh garlic actually quite a lot of garlic and I don't know if you can see some of this cumin powder um, not a lot of cumin just enough to make it less sticky I suppose I've got some vegetables I'm going to put in the bottom so let's make a start um, the first thing I'm going to do is put all the vegetables in and then go on from there so the first thing is that is quite a lot in there really it's a very indulgent recipe this so one of the fresh green peppers just chunks i've got some carrots here um we rather like them they again are a very seasonal vegetable and this this is a delightful thing to be it's warm and it's savory it's full of that umami flavor because of those wonderful mushrooms and it's such a comfort food to have at this time of the year we're into early january and it hasn't stopped raining for what four days it's gray it's dismal it's miserable i've got two onions all of this will add a lovely sweetness to it um, and I've got one more root vegetable that are, mm, I think they're turnips, I think we call them. There's a variety of this sort of thing, different shapes and sizes that they do over here in France. Some of them they call radishes long, radishes black. There's a whole wide variety and some of them they call navettes which and I think these are turnips but they cross over over here they've got such a wide variety of them now this is a couple of handfuls of cabbage this will all add flavor as it slowly cooks down now I'm going to add a jar of these and I'm sure Paul will pull his nose up chickpeas are not something Paul likes he doesn't really like any beans or peas i'm not putting them all in but most of them uh, there's some olive oil okay and pesto pesto is one of my super ingredients at this time of year it adds a sort of a sort of summeriness to flavors so I'm quite keen on that but what we're really expecting to happen is all of the meat juices to penetrate and I'm going to put a spot 
of salt. This is Himalayan salt. Paul likes it. I think they're all very salty and they're fine, but he really likes that. And I'm going to just mix this so that everything gets covered. That way these vegetables will more roast than just steam or boil and they won't be boring, they will be roasted vegetables. And you can see it's got a lovely greenness from our pesto. And that's all I'm doing. It's such a simple thing to be doing at this time of year. All the flavour will be coming from these special mushrooms and the vegetables themselves. The mushrooms will be heavenly. And we'll even convince Paul to try the chickpeas. And I think by the time they've been imbued with all these flavours, he'll be very happy. So our meat is going to sit on top. And our meat is going to be filled with some of this. This will give it sweetness and a, and a different sort of interest. Now, these are these little netty things they put over the top. And you can see it's already in a couple of pieces, but that piece is not joined to that piece. So I think I'm going to get a big knife and make my own hole down the centre. This is not difficult to do, really. There it is. It's come out the other side. I just want to make a big hole. This will add a sort of, yes, it adds flavour, but it also keeps it more moist in the centre. This is always a lovely cut of meat. It's moist. It will be flavourful. And... Apricots are both sweet and sharp. They're ideal. The little exotic flavours of the cumin and the garlic. It will all add something special. This will be absolutely divine. A real comfort dish. For not very much money at this time of year. It's really good, isn't it? And of course all the smells will go into the kitchen and... Yes. Oh, look, you're already smiling and licking your lips. That's what I like to see. Yes. I will be cooking it with the lid on this thing here. And the sort of moisture content will be quite high in there. And that helps to keep pork juicy. Because I really don't like dry meat. In fact, I might end up using it all, Paul. There's quite a lot of it here. Now we put our bit of netting back over the top. Haven't finished yet, but that's that's what we're aiming for. To sort of finish it off nicely. And the other side, it, I've got to find the hole that I cut. Uh, where was it? Um, I think I may have to poke another one, but I'm trying to not poke too many, Paul. Yes, it, well, I think I'll just have to put another one in, Paul. I'm going to have to... Yeah, I think I will. I think I will take a big one. And when you, when you can, you can also... Uh, this is far too much meat for us. But we will eat this hot and cold. And when it's cold, it slices into nice thin slices. And you can just lay them over your rest of your cooked vegetables in a pan with a lid. Let them steam very slowly as you reheat them. And they don't dry out, do they, Paul? They taste really good the next day. Now I've got to poke this in the little gap. And I think we might need them all. Well, I'll have to make some more for the other thing I was doing. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Apricots are quite an interesting thing because there is a tribe, the only tribe on earth, I can't remember where it is now, and it's their staple food, apricot. It's an odd thing to know, isn't it? It's a very strange thing. But I always like apricots because 
unlike most fruits, when you dry them, they're sort of a bit insipid. I think apricots actually come into their own as a dried fruit. They really are very, very nice dried. There you are. We need, I'm just going to put the last of the bits of this in. And we're there. This would be a really, really good dish to put on. I'm going to cook it for a couple of hours because there's quite a lot of food there. And I'm cooking it at about 170. And now you can see we've got all of that is squeezed in somehow. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now I'm going to put some salt on there and some oil. Oil. There you are. Now, as you can see, it's a bit of a rough and ready shape. It doesn't hold together very well, which is one of the reasons people won't pay very much for it over here. It's just not a tidy cut. But if I put the cut side down, it'll, it'll, it'll cook perfectly well. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to push things to the side a bit and just lay it like that. And it will just cook perfectly. If you wanted, you could have put more of your uh, pesto on it. I've chosen not to because I think the flavours from the inside will permeate the meat and produce a slightly different flavour. And the more layers of flavours you have on your plate, the happier I am. It's 175. I'm going to knock it down five. And I'm popping it in the oven now. And in two hours time, or slightly before, because this is a fast oven, I will come back out. If you wanted, you could, for the last hour, put some slices of potato in olive oil on a tray in there to go with it. But you have got the chickpeas and there's quite a lot of root sugary vegetables in there. You've probably got quite enough in the way of carbohydrate. See you soon. Well, it's been the full two hours and it smells wonderful. How could you not like that? Mmm, what a beautiful smell. Now, you have options. You can remove the meat. Now, one of the things I always do is to cut this off. Now, you can leave this liquid quite wet or you can thicken it and make it more of a gravy. But I actually find it better to use a small amount of that and then the next day use that to reheat the meat or add it to a soup and add some Chinese spices and chunks of the meat as well. So it's very, very versatile because you don't want the same thing day after day, do you? You actually did knead it on to keep the meat in a shape that can be used. Now, now I'm going to just slice it in the middle so you can see exactly what it looks like. Now, when you cut a slice, you can just lay them on the plates and the vegetables. You have your, your chickpeas and the little mushrooms are here. Now, I soaked those. I just put them in a little bit of water and heated them in the microwave for a couple of minutes. But the cooking will have softened them and all of this juice smells heavenly of mushroom doesn't it? Mm. Right, so you can see this is absolutely delicious. I'm actually going to have to have a little taste. And you can see how juicy it is. Can you see? If I squeeze it, you can see. So it hasn't all dried out. It's not 
because pork can be quite a dry experience. It is very good, isn't it? But I reckon you could get five or six people out of that. For about what? Three euros? Um, for about three fifty. Okay. It's a, it's a really undervalued meat, I think. Shoulder of pork. But um, I would cut it into thick slices like that for the next day and then I would lay it on top of the vegetables water in a saucepan with a lid and then just let it rise very slowly to full temperature that is beautiful mm -hmm. enjoy I just wanted to try the vegetables mm. I prefer the vegetables to the meat the vegetables are all infused with the um, with these wonderful seps, the mushrooms, but the chickpeas are creamy. It's difficult; they have a the same the same quality in the mouth, the same texture and sweetness as sweet chestnuts, but a fraction of the price. So this is really good. Mm. It's worth doing it just for the vegetables. Paul wouldn't agree, but it, it is. They are really good. Really good. Mm.